What's happening guys, JR Riemann back again coming to you from Bowler X Pro Shop and Training Center where today I have uh, a new little tip for you. Well, maybe it's not really a tip. It's, uh, it's kind of an explanation of what happens when you change your hand position throughout the game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw two different shots and I'm gonna show you what my positive axis is when I'm rolling it up the back um, and I'm just trying to play straighter. And then I'm gonna go move in and I'm gonna get my hand around it and wrap my hand around it. And I'm gonna show you what my positive axis is uh, on that one uh, afterwards. So you can see the difference there and see how it changes the layout based on what the axis actually is. So we're gonna talk about all that here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. So I'm going to grab um, well, let's use this jackal. We're gonna use the new jackal for now just because I wanna see, uh, yeah, it's a little darker color so I can, no, you know what, you know what? I'm gonna use the incredible giant because it's black. So I should be able to see the uh, actual, the, the flare lines on it just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna throw a shot and I'm gonna try to, I gotta do it in the middle of the lane kind of where all the oil is, right at a, like, I'm gonna go to like 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there. I'm gonna throw one shot, rolling it up the back with my normal, you know, up the back type hand position. And then we'll check the positive axis and see what it is from there. All right, so let's take it over to the table and see uh, what the positive axis is on this guy. <laughs> We're gonna measure it out. I'm gonna use what's called an armadillo which is this plastic guy right here. This boy, oh, I should have got a ball cup or something. I don't have a ball cup. Here, we'll use my, we'll use my sweatshirt. How about that? All right. So we can see what I'm looking at here is I've got oil rings here and I wanna put marks down this first ring on the ball up through here. So I can then take those marks, line it up with the armadillo. You can see the armadillo has lines all the way across, whichever line on here lines up the best with that is where you want to go which would be this second one here so that's going to be right about here okay so that's a whole lot different than i expected let's check we're going to double check this so i'm going to take the circle i'm just going to color it in this gives me a nice white blob so what I wanna see is if this white blob stays pretty constant through the front part of the line. So let me zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see what we got going. Roll over this down. Let's see if this stays fairly constant when I throw that same shot. Yep. So it stayed there pretty good. It was hard to see. I can't really see, but I'll go back and look at the camera just to double check. But it looked like it stayed fairly constant there. So that's my positive axis when I roll it forward. It looks like that's changed a little bit. So I'm gonna show you now, based on that, let's see what that actually is. So I'm gonna measure and find where my middle of my grip is. About four and a half full, right? Yeah, so we're gonna be two and a quarter. So right about there is the center. Right, so I'm gonna draw a straight line over from the center all the way across. And then we're gonna draw a straight line up from here to the middle of that dot, which would be right about there. So that is an inch and a quarter up. So one and one quarter up, and then we are, oh boy, we've moved close, four inches over. So four by an inch and a quarter up when I roll it up the back, okay? So let me write that down somewhere, I'll write it right on the table. Four by one and one quarter up when I roll it up the back. All right, so now that makes this actually a, a four inch pin, okay? And that's all I'm really concerned about is the pin distance right now. 
So that's a four inch pen for me right there. Let me go ahead and take those marks off so we can redo this again. And now this time I'm gonna move left and I'm gonna try and get my hand around it so you can see what my axis changes to. If it changes, it should change. So I'm gonna try to get my hand way around it like I would if I'm playing further in and see what the axis is then. Right, now let's check it. It might not be a lot different, but it should be a little bit different. I'm still getting over this cold. Sorry, I'm sniffling in your guys' ears. Yeah, that changed a little bit. All right, there. Changed quite a bit, actually. So now we reline this up again. This time we use that line. Double check this, put a little dot on there again. See if it's the same. See if it holds its line there. Man, that moved closer. What was going on? That's really weird. All right. good too. Okay, now let's measure it out and see if the pin distance changed at all or how much my axis actually, positive axis point changed based on hand position. And then we'll go in the pro shop and we'll check both and we'll see what the layouts fully end up being. So now we're going to be here. I can still see my center line. Boy, we got real close this time. So you brought it much further in. And now I'm only an inch up. So one, so now I'm actually, when I get my hand around it, I'm three inches by an inch up. So that changes quite a bit compared to the four inches by uh, an inch and a quarter up, which then makes this pin distance a little bit stronger right at about three and five eighths inches. So almost makes it max flare then. So as I move left, so let's take it in the shop now and let's go measure it out and see what the layouts actually are for each PAP and how the layout changes and talk about the reaction we should get. All right, y'all, so now we're back in the shop. I got the bowling ball here. We've got a couple of PAPs, so now we're gonna take a look and we're gonna measure out and find out what layouts these actually end up being with each hand position. So we can kind of try to determine what's really going on with the dynamics of the bowling ball when we throw it with different hand positions. All right, so with this, this is my PAP right here, this dot, I mean, right, right there. That dot is my PAP right here for when I am trying to get my hand around it and uh, trying to create a little bit of down lane motion. So I drew the lines on here, created my VAL and all the lines for if I were to lay this ball out. And we're gonna check it out. We're gonna see what it actually ends up being. With this PAP, now I'm looking at a 20 degree first angle, which is really low, which means it's trying to get that core going. And then pin distance is much shorter than intended. Now we're looking at a three and three quarter inch pin. So 20 degrees by three and three quarter by right back here through this pin by about 25. So when I get my hand around it, that creates a 20 degrees by three and three quarter inch pin by 25 degrees. So the 20 degrees is a really low number, which means it's setting the core up to start earlier. The three and three quarter is a high flare. So now we're getting the ball to flare a bunch more. And you can see, I can actually even see the track flare coming all the way around this side of the ball. That's a good thing. Um, so that's a high flare type of number right there. The 25 means that pin distance gets higher. That means the higher that pin distance is up, the more responsive it is. So this is a pretty high response. So we've created a high response bowling ball with that hand position. Now, if I remeasure, I was four inches over by, uh, what was it? An inch and a quarter up, that changes things quite a bit.
try and clean this up a little bit so we can redraw these lines based on the other pin position. Don't really need to, don't need to take them all off, but just the, just the angle ones we've got to get off of here. All right, so now we are four over when we're rolling it up the back of the ball. We are four over and an inch and a quarter up. I'm just gonna draw my VAL line right away here all the way through, but we're an inch and a quarter up. So right there. So we gotta draw a line from the pen through that spot. And then we've gotta draw another line from the pen through the mass bias or the CG or in the, or the PSA, I mean. And now we can check it out. So this right here is my PAP when I'm rolling it up the back of the ball. Okay, so this now becomes um, about 35 by four inches by 30. All right, so we went from 20 by three and three quarter by 25 to 35 by four by 30. So 15 degrees difference in the front gets that core starting just a little bit later. Four inches makes it flare just a pinch less and the 30 puts the pin a little bit lower which smooths the ball reaction out. So when we look at our PAP, our hand position and the things we're doing with the ball, we are changing the layout of that bowling ball. Now, this is actually surprising to me because I haven't checked my PAP in a while. So now I gotta go back through all my stuff and check all my layouts out uh, because I used to be four and three quarter over by an inch and an eighth up. And that was with my rolly hand position. And now I'm only four inches over by an inch and a quarter up. That changes things a little bit for me. Um, but I'm a product of my environment. I'm bowling in a couple of places where there's early friction and where I've got to create down lane motion. So that makes sense. That makes it to where I'm trying to get the ball down lane and still curve down lane. That is actually a good thing for me because now that gets me prepared for those PBA type patterns because those PBA patterns are early friction and it's hard to get the ball to go through the pins down lane better. Um, so that's good. I mean, so you need to test yourself. If you don't have a pro sec, I'm actually working on something guys to where I'm making a cheaper option for a pro sec and an armadillo type situation to where, you know, you're not spending 75 to a hundred dollars on a, on a pro sec and an armadillo. Maybe you can get both for like 50 bucks instead of the hundred dollars, you know, so, or 150 or whatever it is for both. I'm working on an option here. So just stay tuned for that. But yeah, I mean, this is just, uh, it's kind of eye opening when you really think about the way you know, your hand can change your PAP, which in turn changes, you know, the, the ball motion. It changes, it changes the ball reaction and you're changing where the core is, the dynamics of what the core is gonna do and all that. So just pay attention to this stuff. That's why changing your hand position is so important. You can change your layout. So you can make a bowling ball, you know, two or three different bowling balls just by changing your hand. So pay attention to that. Make sure you'll practice, check your PAP. Comment below, let me know what you think about all this stuff. Are you able to change your PAP by that much? Because over an inch is, it's a little bit of a change there. How much can you change your PAP? Go check it out. Um, but I'm gonna get out of here and we'll see you guys later. Take care.